you actually have in mind that it would be possible for you to be a famous artist in Australia? I'd like to work, I'd like to paint, and I want to be a painter like Namadita even more better than him, even more better. Gubal Athel and Dick Rothsey was an artist who achieved a lot, but really hasn't had the recognition that he should have had. Dick was born uh, in the early 1920s, and although white Australians had established some settlement in the Gulf, they hadn't really had a great impact on the islands yet. I lived out in the bush and uh, ate what uh, my people ate, my parents, my tribe. I lived and played with them, a few other little children. Then the missionary came, he would send them out to get uh, and bring us in, you know, to, to go to school. So they gave him the name Dick, but his father's two names um, meant Deep Sea and Rough Sea, his traditional names. So they took the anglicised, Europeanised version of, of Rough Sea, put them together and it became Rough Sea, the one word is a, a surname. Before Dick, uh, there are really only those isolated examples of artists coming through Namatjira. Um, Joe Rootsy, who was a, a North Queensland Aboriginal artist. The Papunya movement didn't really start until the 70s and didn't gain a lot of public notice uh, until the, the 1980s. So he did this all um, really on his own um, before Aboriginal art existed. One of the, the important jobs that he did uh, manage to get was aboard um, a service supply ship which travelled throughout the Gulf and all the way across to Arnhem Land. There he was able to observe a number of bark painters and artists at work. So that's something that he took with him um, back to Mornington. Dick met a, a North Queensland artist by, by the name of Percy Trezice, who was also an ANSET pilot, um, and Percy was painting a, a mermaid on the bottom of the hotel pool. I was about halfway through the job, I think, putting some of the finishing touches, and I heard somebody coughing up the top there, so I looked up and here's this very handsome young dude of a, an Aboriginal bloke. No beard then, you know, but a uh, flash sort of bloke. I was painting on shields then, uh, Abel figures and also fish and turtle, you know, and all that. Well, I was so interested in them days. Oh, very interested, you know, because I knew then that I had firstly, you know, uh, someone there to help me. His key influence really was Albert Namajira, and he wanted to paint his own country in that style, but. Percy Trezice really wanted Dick to go back and to paint about the things that he knew about, you know, his knowledge systems and really hone his painting skills so that when he started doing these more Western style landscapes that he was painting from a foundation of knowledge. One of the things that Dick was really successful in doing was drawing in a, a lot of people to his work. Um, they were really accessible and inevitably that, I guess, narrative landscape style lent itself to what he became best known for, which were the, the children's illustrated storybooks and, and, and sort of dreaming stories. Far out in dream time, there were only people, no animals. Bed. Dick and Percy had been doing quite a lot of work and research and documentation of particularly of the cave paintings but um, you know also of different ladle um, stories and narratives from Dick's own country so these storybooks that they made are so important particularly the Rainbow Serpent of course but you know others like the giant devil dingo and the Quinkins for a lot of people 
it led to a greater acceptance of Aboriginal narratives, histories um, and ideas. And for Indigenous people, young Indigenous people who also read those books as one of the first books they ever owned, it was a sign that you know, our stories and histories could be you know, positioned alongside other stories and histories and narratives within this country. It's actually hard for me to understand why he's not better known as an artist. Uh, I guess it's really due to the work of um, the painters from Papunya in the Western Desert and um, advocacy for that style of work, which then became well known as Aboriginal art. So a lot of these stories like Dick's, like Joe Rootsy, um, like other artists who weren't painting in that style and indeed who didn't have a cultural connection to that style, um, their work was sort of put to the side. Um, and it's only now that we can start to show them in um, institutions like this to sort of broaden that scope and idea of Aboriginal art.